In this video, we're going to see how we can apply the idea of binary search to determining the lowest element in a cyclically shifted sorted list. So we're going to be given a list that looks like this, which is sorted. So all of these elements, one through seven, are sorted. And we can shift the elements around in this list. We could do so in a cyclic manner. So for instance, one of the few cyclic permutations that we can apply on this list Here's again the original list. The elements are sorted from one to seven and we can apply one shift. And if we do so, that will shift this first element here from the front to the back. So we've shifted that one to the back. All of the elements stay the same. They kind of get shifted up if you like. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one at the end. This example here, we've shifted twice in this example from the initial list. So we have the initial list here and this list here is shifted twice, so we've moved the one to the back, and then the second part of that is to move the two to the back. So this starts at three, goes up to seven, and then one and two. And then we have a similar thing here starting at four. So this is three cyclic shifts performed on the initial list, which gives us four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. So that is the notion of what a cyclic shift is. And in this video, what we want to do is we want to write a function that determines the index of the smallest element of some cyclically sorted array. So this is the last uh, example that we showed in this slide. This is the example that we're going to be working with in this slide. And what we want our function to do is output the smallest element. So in this case, that would output this element here, which is one. So if we don't perform any cyclic shifts on this list, it's very easy for us to determine what the smallest element is. But as you shift these things around, it's a little bit trickier to know how many shifts have been applied. And it might be a little bit tricky to figure out where the smallest element is once you've shifted these elements. So I encourage you to pause the video now if you haven't solved this problem already. Work through it. Try to solve it yourself. And if you get stuck or if you want to see the solution in this video, go ahead and unpause it. We can work through it together. So the way that we're going to solve this problem or approach it is we're going to make use of binary search. So what we're going to do is let's take this example that we're going to be working through in this video and let's just go ahead and apply the idea of binary search to this list. So what I've done is I've highlighted the kind of the starting point of binary search, which is to figure out what the low point is, which is denoted here in blue, figure out the high point, which is denoted here in three, it's the last element of the list, and then the midpoint, which is taken by uh, considering the indices of the low and high point and the divided by two. And if we do that, that will give us this element here at, at the middle index of this list, which is highlighted in orange. So we have kind of our, our point set. And what we want to do is we want to apply some notion of binary search that will allow us to shift the low and high points respectively to be able to figure out where in our search space this lowest element is living. So let's just consider what's going on here in this example. So we have here our midpoint is seven. And what, we're going to want to, what we could do is we could compare the element seven with the high point. And we can ask this question as to whether or not the midpoint is lesser or greater than the high point. So if the midpoint in this case, if it's greater than the high point, that means that the previous part of the list, since we know it was previously, since we know it was sorted, all the elements leading up to that element are increasing. And the element here, since it's greater than this one, all of these ones must be smaller. So there, there's a potential for the smallest element to be in this chunk of the list. So just as kind of an example, let's just take a look at uh, another example where this opposite case occurs. That is, consider a more shifted list of the one that we've already got there. Consider this case where our element here is now less than the high point. So three is less than six. And in this case, we know that all of these elements must be increasing, right? So from three to six, it must be increasing. We compare this with the midpoint, and we know that nowhere in this increasing list could it possibly be that the smallest element is gonna be present, because again, we're looking for the smallest element. So it's not gonna be in this chunk of the list because all of these elements are going up. We wanna find the smallest element in the list. So it's kind of the opposite logic for this case here. So we're going to shift our high and low points based on this, on this idea. So going back to this example, Considering the midpoint here, we see that the high point is less than the midpoint. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is eliminate all of that because the one in this case, the smallest element, cannot possibly be in any of these elements to the left. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we've restricted our search space and now we've computed the low point. We've recalculated the low point to be one. 
the high point is still three and the midpoint is recalculated to be two. So what we do now is a similar thing. We can pair this element here with the high point. We say, okay, is this element lesser or greater than the high point? Well, in this case, two is less than three. So again, we kind of apply the same logic. We say, well, the smallest element cannot possibly be on this side of it because we're only going up on this case. We're only going up in this area. So we can just dismiss all of the elements that are on this uh, to the right of the midpoint, which is essentially just one element in this case. So if we do that, we're left with this new array now. And we've just eliminated that three, recalculated our uh, low and high point, and in this case, we don't have any midpoint, we just have a low and a high. And all we need to do in this case is just, if we, if we come down to a case like this, all we need to do is just return the low point, which is going to give us the smallest element in the list. So that is the general approach of how we're going to apply binary search in this, uh, to solve this problem. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to the terminal Python and code this up. So I'm here in the terminal and we're gonna go ahead and code this up in Python. So I've already gone ahead and, and defined a list which I'm calling A, and that's equal to the same list that we were dealing with on the slides. So just to make sure that we get the consistent output with what we saw before. So let's go ahead and create a function which we'll call find, and it will take an array. We'll call that A in the function as well. And then what we want to do in this function is we want to start off by doing kind of the same things that we've seen in the previous binary search videos. And that is we want to figure out what the low point, high point, and midpoint of the given list that we're given is. So just to refresh, if we go back to the slides, we were given a list here and then we outline the low point, the high point, and the midpoint. So again, low point is the start of the list, high point, the last element of the list, and the midpoint is based on the indices of the low and the high points, at least initially. So we're going to go ahead and say low is equal to zero. That's the index of the first element. High is equal to the length of a minus one. That minus one's there just to buffer so we don't read beyond the bounds of the array. And then what we're going to do is we do in binary search is we're going to have a looping condition while low is less than high. And then we're going to calculate our midpoint. So mid is equal to low plus high, and that's divided by two. So that's going to give us the index and the midpoint. So now what we want to do is actually code in the logic that's going to determine how we redefine those low and high points based on what our midpoint is. And we're, we'll go ahead and, and look at the slides again to make sure that we're doing this correctly. So in the event where the midpoint is greater than the high point, we're going to want to do something. And in the case where the midpoint is lesser than the high point, we're going to want to do something else. So let's take care of the first case. If the midpoint of the list is greater than the high point. So that's exactly what we have in this example here. So if we go back to the slides, in the case where we have this midpoint greater than the high point, what we want to do is essentially eliminate all of the elements to the left of the midpoint because we know that the smallest element cannot be in this portion of the array. So we're going to want to redefine our low point to be this element here, which is essentially the midpoint plus one. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go back to the terminal. So in this event, what we're going to want to do is set low equal to mid plus one. So otherwise, so else if a of mid is less than or equal to a of high, then what we're going to have in this case, let's just go back to the slides here. So in this case, we're going to have something that looks like this, where the midpoint is less than the element that's at the high point. So in this case, we know that the element that we're looking for can't be in the upper portion of the array. So we can eliminate all of the elements to the right of the midpoint. So we'll go ahead and do that in the code. So we'll say high is equal to the midpoint. And then just like we saw on the slides, as we went along here with our example, we eventually came to a case like this, and then we returned the low point. So what we're gonna to wanna to do at the end of this loop, once we exit, is we're just going to return the low point. So this will be the index at which the smallest element in the list uh, is contained. So let's go ahead and run this just to make sure that it's behaving as we expect. So we'll say x, let's say index is equal to find of a. And then what we can do is we can print out a of that index. So we should get one in this case because this index in this case will be, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That will be the index. And then a of 4 should be 1. So let's go ahead and print out the index too, just so we get uh, that information as well. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to say clear. 
and then I'm going to type in Python and this is just called test for now. So test.py. And so we see that the index at which one resides is four. If we say a of four, that's going to give us the element one, which is indeed the smallest element in the list. So that is pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code will be available on my GitHub and you can download that. Uh, the link will be in the description. So thanks again for taking the time to watch and have a nice day.